Hello there. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use two really important online tools in regards to registering and enrolling for classes here at UCI. Those two being Schedule of Classes, which is an online catalog that basically has every single class for that term on there, and WebReg, which is the online tool that actually does the adding and dropping of classes. Let's start with the schedule of classes. If you want to access this page, uh, you can either follow the link that you see on screen right now, uh, or you can instead type in UCI schedule of classes into your search engine, and it usually will be the first link. Now that we're on the SOC web page, let's talk about some important features. Uh, for starters, let's talk about the term. You want to make sure that using this drop down menu, that SOC is using the correct term. Now, the drop down will let you access uh, a bunch of previous terms from past years, but it'll also let you select the current term that you are currently in, as well as the term for which uh, enrollments are taking place, if at all. Since we're currently, at the time of this recording, in spring 2021, uh, that'll be the default option. But uh, as soon as the enrollment windows for, let's say, fall 2021 open up, then the site default will be fall 2021. It'll be that quarter in which you're enrolling in. Then you want to look at this next drop down menu. This will let you select the department for your class. So for example, if you're taking an EECS class, that'll fall under the department EECS. Now keep in mind, not all of the department codes are going to be as straightforward as this one. Uh, for example, if let's say you're taking a CS course, it's not going to appear as CS in the list, but instead as comp sci. So just be sure that you're checking all possible versions of your uh, course department when you're looking through this list. Now, let's say you're not really sure uh, what your course number is, or you want to find out what courses fall under this department. At this point, you can just go and click display web results. And what this will do is it'll display all the classes that fall under that department for that quarter or that term. Uh, every class will be divided by these like little purple tabs that will show the department code followed by the course number followed by like the actual name of the course. Now if you do know your course code, uh, what you can do is in the box right below the department list you can see course number, just type it in there, hit display web results, and this time it'll actually just show you the specific course that you inputted and all the sections that fall under it. Another thing to note about course codes is that if let's say your course code has a letter in it, like 142A, for example, uh, obviously you can put that in and it'll work just fine. But let's say you're not really sure if it's like A, B, L, whatever, you can just put in the number section, hit display results, and it'll actually show you uh, all possible variants of this one, of course, under the department and in that term. Now, let's say we've already selected what course we want. We want this course. Uh, what information do we need in order to enroll in it? For starters, let's look at the leftmost column. That has the course code. It's a five digit code that is unique, not just to this course, but to each individual section of that course. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, each course has a number of sections, each section being something like a lecture section, a discussion section, a lab section. Uh, but there are also, let's say, different sections of the same type. Usually, if, let's say, there's two or three labs that take place at different times, each one would classify as its own section of that course. It's important to note this because the course code will actually be slightly different for each section. So the course codes are genuinely unique for each section. Another neat thing to note is the next two columns right over on the right. You'll see the number of units each section has. Usually, the bulk of the units will be with the lecture. Uh, and of course, which instructor is going to be teaching that section. The next column is the time column. This is usually broken up into sort of two little parts. The first is a letter string, which will contain uh, the letters that represent what day it'll take place in. So for example, if it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, you'll see it'll be T-U-T-H. Uh, if it's a Friday course, you'll see F, Monday, M, W, Wednesday, etc. The next part of the time block is the actual time slot it'll be taking place in. So for example, that first one right there is from 11 to 1230. One little detail to keep track of, though, is whether or not at the end of a time slot you see the letter P. If you don't see a letter, it just means that it's going to be taking place in the AM. If you see the letter P, it means it'll be taking place during the PM. 
So for example, up here, we have uh, 11 to 12.30 p, which means up to 12.30 at noon. And we see in the bottom over here how it says 11 to 11.50 without a p, that tells us that it's 11 to 11.50 in the morning. The next column, place, is also pretty important. This will tell you where the course is gonna be taking place. Uh, now, if you're gonna be taking it on campus, it'll usually be a building code followed by the room number. Um, but if you're taking an online course instead, it'll just say virtual remote. Next, we're gonna skip over to the max and roll and WL columns. Uh, these are pretty straightforward once you figure them out. So max is just the maximum capacity of that class. Uh, enroll or ENR is the number of students currently enrolled in that class at that moment. And WL is the number of students that are on the wait list for that class. Now, usually if the number of students enrolled is less than the max, then obviously it'll be open. And this is reflected in the rightmost column status, which tells you it's open. Um, if the number of enrolled students matches the number of maximum students allowed, and you see there's a few students on the waitlist or the waitlist is empty, then it'll tell you that it's a waitlisted class. So it'll have waitlist in the status column. And of course, if everything is full, both enroll and waitlist, then it'll tell you something like full or closed, depending on the situation. Now that we've figured out which courses and which sections we wanna enroll in, let's start actually enrolling in them. First thing you need to do is make sure you have the course codes for each of those sections that you want to enroll in. And then we're going to go over to WebWrench, which is the UCI software that will actually do the enrolling for us. Now, you can, of course, uh, get to WebWrench by just typing in UCI WebWrench into Google. But the fastest way to do it, in my experience, is to just scroll up and click on WebWrench over here. So that'll take you to this page, but this isn't WebWrench. This is just telling you how to use it. If you want to access WebRedge, you should press the yellow button in the corner that says Access WebRedge. After clicking that, you'll probably be sent to this UCI login page. Basically, all you need to do is log in with your UCI Net ID and password. If you don't know, your UCI Net ID is basically your UCI email, just minus the at uci.edu part. After logging in successfully, it'll take you to this page, which is WebRedge. Uh, there's five main options that you can play around with, uh, the first being the enrollment menu, which will allow you to add, drop, or change something about the courses you're enrolled in. Unfortunately, the enrollment menu does not provide you with a catalog. That's why we used schedule of classes earlier. Enrollment menu is only for adding, dropping, or changing things about your courses. The next option is the waitlist menu. This is what you would select if you want to modify uh, what courses you're waitlisted for. The next three options, unlike the first two, won't take you to a different page. They'll just update the bottom of the page with some additional text, depending on what you selected. So the first one, enrollment window, will tell you when enrollment windows are going to be available. Uh, once that date has passed and enrollment windows have become available, it'll tell you when your specific enrollment window will be. Why is this important? An enrollment window basically says when you're allowed to enroll in classes. It'll usually be a very specific day and a very specific time. You basically have any time between the moment your personal enrollment window opens and the start of the next quarter to enroll in classes without any issues. The next option is pretty straightforward. It's fee status. Clicking on it will tell you whether or not you have paid off your fees for the current quarter or if your enrollment window is open and you're allowed to enroll, it'll tell you if you've paid off your fees for the quarter you're enrolling in. Lastly, we have study list. If it is not your enrollment window right now and you can't enroll in anything, then it'll display what courses you're currently enrolled in for the current quarter. Uh, otherwise, if you are in the middle of enrolling or your enrollment window is opened, clicking on study list will display which courses you've enrolled in for the upcoming quarter. Now let's talk about the main page, the enrollment menu. There are a few upper navigation options that'll take you to different pages or do things like show your study list or log out. Um, there's also a send request button and a reset button. The primary box of the enrollment menu can be split into two separate boxes. There's the left box, which allows you to add, change, drop a course, or view all the open sections of the same type under that course. And then there's the right box, which will allow you to put in uh, optional parameters for your class. 
If you wanted to add or change a course, then you would take the five digit course code that we recorded earlier, and you would put it into that first uppermost box. Then you would bubble in add or change, depending on whichever you want, and then you'd proceed from there. If you wanted to drop a course instead, or you wanted to view all the open sections of that same type of that class, then put it, your course code in the lower box instead, and then bubble in either drop or list open sections. Now let's move our attention onto the right boxes. The three text fields in here are optional parameters for whatever course you're going to add or change. If you're gonna drop a course or list open sections, you don't have to fill any of this out. The first box is the grade option. If you leave it blank or put in a one, that tells WebRedge that you wanna take that course for a grade, so A, B, C. Uh, if you leave a two instead, what it'll do is it'll tell WebRedge that you want to take that class on a pass-no-pass -pass basis. The variable units box is specifically for classes that have variable units, like 199 research courses. If your class doesn't have variable units, it has a set amount, then you can just leave this blank. The last text field on the right is the authorization code. This is specifically for classes that are in some way restricted or need some kind of additional code to enroll in. If you don't have one of these classes, it's not what you're enrolling in, leave it blank. After you've filled in all the appropriate text fields, all you do is just hit send request and WebRedge will do the rest. If there are any issues with the request you're making, WebRedge will let you know, like if you have a conflict of times or if a class needs an authorization code, for example. Otherwise, it will just display part of your study list showing that you've added that course. Keep in mind, if you're enrolling in a class that has multiple types of sections, so like a lecture, a discussion, and a lab, you need to enroll in one of each of those sections for the enrollment to actually go through. Well, that's all there is to it. If you're done enrolling in all your classes and sending requests, then you can click on study list just to make sure that everything has gone through, and then just log out. This is a lot of info for sure, and might take a little bit of time getting used to, but after a few quarters, it'll become like muscle memory. Good luck with enrolling in classes, Anteaters.